Hello, these have been on the list for a while, hybrid power bank and power adapters. This is another first for the channel. Today, I have the Anchor 733, Anchor 511, and the Bassius 2-in-1 adapters, covering three power levels, 20, 45, and 65 watts. It's time to find out if putting one and one together equals two or nothing. I will put these through the All Things One Place testing gauntlet to find out if they can achieve top marks. We will go through each of the features and functions of these power adapters and power banks to see if they meet the claims on the box. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power bank do I want to get? These videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors. In this video, the devices will be reviewed to find out the charging capabilities to help you make an informed buying decision. These devices are unique in that they combine a power adapter and a power bank. One device means less cables. The question is, what was sacrificed to cram two products into one box? How do these really perform and are they worth it? These are complicated products and there's a lot of testing and data, so I'm summarizing a lot of things in this video. If you want more videos like this, subscribe to catch these videos. If you want to help support the channel, there's a link to Patreon, a super button, and my website down in the description. Thanks to my current patrons and channel supporters. First up is a compact little power bank and power adapter from Anchor, the 511, or PowerCore Fusion 5K. This 5 series has the happy, not happy tag, and we will figure out which one it is later on. The general features are fairly sparse on this one as it is a basic product. Folding plugs and one USB-C port. The port can deliver 5 or 9 volts in the USB power delivery mode. No PPS or programmable power supply mode here, but with the lower power level, I don't think that matters. The claimed maximum power is 20 watts in for both the battery and the power adapter modes. This one is fairly light on marketing, basically it'll do what it says it does. The device has a safety listing mark on the side, and I don't see any claim of Department of Energy efficiency mark, but that is expected for a hybrid product. The cable location is not amazing on this device. Any way you plug it in, the USB port on the top blocks the other outlet. This is a pretty major oversight if you want to use this for two purposes. On a power strip, this will block a whole lot more than two outlets. So here is the data for this device as a power bank. The overall efficiency end to end is not amazing. It charges on pace as mentioned, but still not brilliant. The battery can deliver about 15 watt hours to your device, so less than one full charge of a modern cell phone. The power did drop down to 15 watts also, so it's not capable of delivering even 18 watts or 20 watts as claimed. The device does not function as an uninterruptible power supply. On power off of the AC side, the DC side also goes to zero. The device does not have an always on output voltage. If the load is light enough, the device will turn off the output after a few seconds. This may struggle to charge things like smartwatches or headphones. The Bassius 2-in-1 is another attempt at this power bank and power adapter in one product. One has a bit more claimed capability. It comes with some basic accessories, but unusually comes with a 60 watt only USB-C cable, which is a bit unusual for Bassius. Normally, we get 100 watt cables. This device is supposed to deliver 45 watts, but here we have to start looking at the fine print. It is only 30 watts in battery mode, so the feature set gets smaller depending on how you use this device. It has two USB-C ports and each is capable of a fairly wide range of outputs. We get the usual power delivery modes, fixed voltages up to 20 volts, as well as a PPS or variable output voltage mode of 11 volts. This mode can deliver 45 watts, but I feel like it will struggle to stay in that mode, so I'm not sure this is the choice for Samsung. Also remember that drops to 30 watts on battery. This device has a safety listing mark on the side and it does have a claim of Department of Energy efficiency mark which is unusual and probably doesn't belong. The LED indication on this device functions two ways. One of the LEDs turns orange if you have any PD modes enabled. Not sure why this matters but okay. It is also shared as one of the battery indicators. When the battery gets low and a PD mode is enabled this turns into a total fail machine not indicating any anything of value. So here is the data for this device as a power bank. The overall efficiency end to end is low. It charges fairly slow, way slower than 45 watts. The battery can deliver about 29 watt hours into your device, which means it isn't charging your laptop or tablet, but should be able to get a full charge into a phone. This is not amazing. The power did drop to only 20 watts and the voltage dropped to 15 volts. This will trigger issues if you try to use this with a laptop. I can't say any of this is good. This device does not function as an uninterruptible power supply. On power off of the AC side, the DC side goes to zero. Here is the power adapter data for this one. This is a bad power adapter, among the worst I have ever seen. 
the idle power usage is high, the efficiency is low, and in this case, both are low enough that it doubly doesn't meet the claimed Department of Energy standards. So this is likely a straight up lie on the product or some tricks were done that aren't being told to the public, like the battery was removed for testing. I guess in that case, it's still a lie. The device does not have an always on output voltage. If the load is light enough, the device will turn off after a few seconds. This may struggle to charge things like smartwatches or headphones. Okay, the Anchor 733, it's the one you came here for. Hopefully you didn't skip too much of the previous ones for the comparison points. If you did, you better go back because without them, this doesn't have as much context. This device comes with some basics like a carrying case, a short 60 watt only USB-C cable, and a user manual, which doesn't tell us a whole lot. But I like that they opted for pictures here as opposed to a lot of text. The USB features for this device are exactly what you expect. It is a 65 watt power adapter effectively. The modes of operation include everything except 12 volts on the USB-C ports. The USB-A port does support QC modes including 12 volts. The marketing claims are a bit more specific on this one, but it doesn't feature particularly high numbers of charges for the devices you plug in. Seems like it has a lot of ports for the feature set. In fact, when you want to use this as a battery, and this isn't anywhere in the marketing material, this device isn't a 65 watt device. It is a 30 watt power bank. That's sad. You just got fooled, and so did I. This device does have a push and hold function, so it can charge low power devices. They specifically make the claim that it can charge low power devices like headphones. So here is the data for this device as a power bank. The overall efficiency end to end is a little better thanks to the relatively high efficiency at which this device can deliver its battery's energy to the output port. Charging is another story though. The battery can deliver about 33 watt hours to your device, so starting to get useful, and this would meet the marketing claims Anchor has made. The power adapter did drop down to 25 watts, also indicating some internal overheating, just like the others. The device does not function as an uninterruptible power supply. As usual, on power off of the AC side, the DC side also goes to zero. Here is the power adapter data for this one. The power adapter is where this falls down. Anchor 65 watt devices aren't amazing and this one is worse. The idle power usage is high. The other performance statistics are not great either. The efficiency is just not where it should be for a power adapter like this. The power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. As expected, these all lack power factor correction. The lines should all look the same as the yellow line, meaning following a sinusoidal shape of the yellow line, which would be the ideal shape for all the different lines. As you can see here, the lines are all very different shapes, and that means the power factor is very poor. The current is very high on the peak side also, which means when it is using power, the loss of the system, your wall socket, is higher. This isn't taking into account in the efficiency calculations, so real world, these are worse than shown. These all have one issue. They can't deliver the power they say they can on battery without shutting down. The cases didn't get overly externally hot, but something in all cases triggered a shutdown. All of them shut down before they could deliver the energy in the battery. The Bassius behaved the strangest by dropping the voltage off before finally tripping. I imagine the reason they shut down is overheating internally of the crammed in power supply components. The weights for these three devices are shown here. The extra weight for two devices in one and a tiny battery means they don't win any awards for energy density. It looks like you can easily carry a 30 watt power adapter a bigger power bank and a short USB cable for less weight and end up with better overall performance. All right, time for some overload testing. As with any power adapter or power bank, we can push this in two ways to its limits to see how many watts it can deliver. The expectation is that the device will safely shut down in the case of a situation like a short circuit or a broken cable. I went ahead and tested the various ports and options on the adapters to find several overload limits. It looks like these are all within reasonable, safe limits. After any overload, mostly these require you to unplug the port and replug in. No recovery. On the multi-port devices, any plug and unplug causes a reset of the power negotiation. The Anchor and Bassius behave the same here. The charging times for these devices is pretty slow. They charge at a fairly low rate. The 511 took about two and a half hours to charge and the others took about three hours to charge. The watts are available in the power adapter part, but it heavily limits what it doles out to the power bank side. So they will charge well under the rated capacity. 
and therefore take quite a while to charge. Energy is how we find out what these devices can do. It is measured in something called watt hours. They do print this in tiny text on the power bank, but it could be a little more clear. Also, knowing the usable capacity would be a big improvement since it is basic math to go from watts to usage time for any device. This is an example of at least providing the information somewhere. I do think it would be nice if the usable watt hour capacity was stated as well. I doubt anyone will do this because it's a variable, but an average value could be listed, or a greater than some number of watt hours. Stating the capacity honestly will let people calculate real use times instead of expecting, in this case, 18, 37, or 38 and a half watt hours and getting 15, 32, or 29 watt hours all over the place. Also really low numbers. The runtime is a function of power output, but as we saw, none of these devices will run at the rated wattage for very long. The 511 drops down to 15 watts after a couple minutes, the 733 drops down to 25 watts after a couple minutes, and the 211 drops down to 20 watts after a couple minutes. All of these will run into issues charging many modern devices. The 733 is the most capable though. In terms of overall performance, as power adapters, these sit on the low end. They're not great power adapters. Then, for the battery performance, they're a hit and miss. Because the power adapter is bad, the total system efficiency is low. The discharge efficiency is actually acceptable on the Anchor products, and good in the case of the 733, but the weak power adapter takes away all the gains. Okay, overall, these devices fail the general testing process in multiple ways. The battery is heavy for the capacity, so as a power bank, these are inconvenient. The power adapter in each of these is not good. The power banks all struggle in one way or another. The price for the Anchors is too high. The price point for the Bassies is reasonable, but it isn't a good product in a lot of ways. End-to-end -end efficiency is on the lower side for all of them. Bassius makes a claim of Department of Energy 6, and there's absolutely no chance they meet that requirement, so they faked it or lied about it, which is not okay. These devices all have relatively high idle power consumption. After charging has stopped, every time you plug them in, they top off the battery so they use several watts for around 20 to 30 minutes before tapering off. Because these have batteries, the product lifespan is going to be shorter than a normal power adapter. One positive is, there are two devices in one. You save one cable. Another positive is, these devices are all well under the watt hour requirement to travel on a plane and some of these have more modes to top off a laptop, although I expect you run into some issues with that. Charge, then stop charging. All of these products have a US, Canada, and generally more for safety listings. This generally applies to the AC to DC safety side and the material safety, but it is always welcome to have this. Two in one is best by a long shot to keep as two in two devices. But if I had to pick one, the Anchor 733 is the best of the bunch. A battery and a charger. Not only could it be smaller, charge faster, and be more efficient if good choices are made, it will also last longer as two pieces versus one. The multi-combo everything device ends up in general as a failure of all things in one place. After all that, I leave the decision up to you as to whether these are for you. These are on the database and tested as power adapters. Thanks for watching. Next week, the current plan is to work on another power adapter or two. There is a schedule on my website of upcoming videos. I am, again, still working on the rating system for these power banks. Check the description for affiliate links. Thanks again, and goodbye.